It was the first rain-free, warm and sunny weekend since the rainy season began four months ago, with temperatures forecast to reach the lower to mid-70s. We pulled out of our driveway at 9.05 Saturday morning and headed down our street towards the freeway for the 36-mile drive to Baylands Park in Sunnyvale at the southern tip of San Francisco Bay. The freeway traffic appeared nearly as heavy as a typical weekday commute time, which seemed odd for a mid-morning on a Saturday. It took us 50 minutes to drive the 36 miles. At 10 o'clock in the morning, Baylands Park was also pretty busy. We paid the $6 entry fee and found a parking spot near the field where we fly our drones. The RC, that is Radio Controlled Aircraft Flyers, had gotten there before our scheduled meetup time and over a dozen of them were already flying their RC aircraft out on the field. They had big planes, small planes, and even a jet. Many were home-built and were performing aerobatics with them. Our group had its table set up under the eucalyptus trees at the edge of the field, and a few of our members were setting their launching pads out on the short grass. With so many RC aircraft flying around, we had to be careful launching our drones to avoid collisions. The RC aircraft were generally operating between 20 and 40 feet above the ground, so I took my drone up to 100 feet, as did a couple of drone pilots. However, most of our members are FPV pilots who like to do aerobatics with their smaller drones closer to the ground, generally not above 10 feet. Now, unlike the FPV drone flyers, I prefer to use my drone for video capture of the surrounding scenery. As there's not much to see above Balin's Park, the challenge became to find something interesting to focus on. The park is over 70 acres and it has hiking trails, picnic areas, and a children's playground. It's adjacent to a 105-acre wetlands preserve, a protected area providing habitat for plants and wildlife where drones are prohibited. It's also next to the Don Edwards San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge. After landing from my first flight of the day, I took a break and walked around talking with some of the other drone operators. Several complained about encountering RF signal interference, leading to difficulty in controlling their drones. I told them I too had received RF signal interference alerts on my controller, but they were short-lived and the controller maintained its connection with my drone. So we started speculating on the cause, and at first thought it could be due to the 100-foot maximum altitude imposed by FCC regulations for this area. But some of those affected had not flown high enough to encounter the geofence above. 
Then we heard from several RC aircraft pilots who also were getting interference and actually losing control of their aircraft. In both cases, drones and RC controlled aircraft, the controllers have a built-in fail-safe to land or hover the drones or aircraft automatically if signal is lost between them and their controllers. Several aircraft had landed as a result of the RF interference that they encountered, but one guy lost his homemade RC controlled airplane. So, we organized a search party and sent our drones out to different locations to find it. I carefully scanned the ground in my search area to no avail. Others returned with no success as well. For all anyone knew, the uncontrolled plane could have flown out of the park and crashed into the bay. Besides, all the drones and RC aircraft in the air simultaneously at the park, we had to be aware of another airspace user, commercial airlines, which were flying close to the park in a southbound direction to land at San Jose Mineta Airport. We were on the front side of a low pressure system that was producing winds from the south. By noon, the wind had switched back again to its normal flow from the north and the commercial planes began circling around far to the east of us to land at San, jo San Jose's northbound runway. I'll get that right one of these days. Anyhow, by noon, the drone meetup had officially ended and most of us started packing up to leave. One of my buddies in the group had met up with a friend of his who was an RC aircraft builder and pilot, the same guy whose lost aircraft was never found. My friend was going to stick around to help his other friend hunt for the lost plane. Back home in Oakland, I got a text from him saying they had found it lodged in the top of a tree at 1.30 and their challenge was how to get it down. So they watched a YouTube video on how to use a drone to get a model airplane out of a tree. It worked. The guy got his damaged plane back, but at least he wouldn't have to build another one from scratch. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that one of the group's newest members lost her drone when it crashed into the bay. So, lessons all around for everybody, drone and RC pilots alike. Beware of flying close to the water and beware of RF signal interference in an area where multiple drones and or RF aircraft are flying.